Belters and welcome. My name is Philippa and I'm going to show you how to make this super cute needle felting mat and you can make it in your own colours. It's really easy to do. You dry felt it a bit, then you wet felt it and then you just have to wait for it to dry. I am so pleased with mine. Let me show you how to make one. So what I've got here is a carded bat. It is 200 grams and I used all of it. Um, I get mine from World of World, doesn't cost too much. And then I have my colours here, which is, a, they're a roving. I think you can use carded either way. So those are the colours I really liked and I wanted to pop those sort of all around the outside. You could just have it in white if you wanted. So what I've done here is I've taken probably about a fifth, maybe even a quarter of the 200 grams and I'm just shaping it into a really rough circle. This is not neat at the start. And you're going to be doing quite a bit of felting. I have got a multi-needle tool holder there, which I'll show you in more detail. I've got a really good video on multi-needle tools, which I will link at the end or in the description. So we're just going to see, there it is. It's got four needles and it's the needles you put in it, which make it work really, really well. Um, so we're just going to make this as circular as possible. If you want to do a square shape, um, I got um, most of the ideas of this off Fuzzy Wuzzy Crafts video, the way they did theirs. It's really good. I'll link it in description. They did a square one with a template. I just wanted to do a round one. So go and have a look at that video if, you, if you're looking to do a square one. So just literally, we're just going to keep felting it down. It took me in all probably about an hour and a half to two hours my mat here was a little bit dirty, I noticed, because um, I've been doing a grey horse. So I just gave it a quick clean. Uh, it's really easy if you lose, use these lint removers to clean, especially this is a wool buddy mat I've got. And I'm going to link the eight different mats that um, I'm going to review and also how to clean them as well. But um, that lint remover does a fantastic job getting the bits off. So I then carried on and I'm going to speed up various bits of it. So once you've got a base shape, take some more and just keep wrapping it around and trying to make sure that it's quite even. Um, it's not rocket science here. It doesn't matter if it's uh, too lumpy. We're just going to work through the lumps and then you can add bits of uh, the core wool to it afterwards. But yes, this just this is the bit that takes a while. And this has given me a real new appreciation for the wool buddy mat that's underneath. I can tell you that because the wool buddy mat is absolutely solid um, and it must be made in a very similar way. So again, I've taken a load more. And as I said, I used up all 200 um, grams of the uh, carded bat. I used a carded bat in particular because I think it's going to be easier to felt. And then the uh, roving or tops that I used on top, I thought gave it a very uh, sort of pretty look to it. But like I said, you could do it in any colour you want. So I'm just going to work it all the way over now. Now I'm fairly happy with the shape. You've got to work inwards to keep the edges quite chunky. And we're going to be adding some more to it anyway. So I spent quite a long time probably working over half of the wool here and then I'm going to add another layer and work that. I like the base to be, you know, fairly firm. So here we go. I've added some more and then I worked on adding um, the edges and making sure the edges were nice and thick because I didn't want it to sort of slope off too much towards the edge. And then we just keep working it again and we're not I'm not needle felting this really firm just fairly firm so it was about nine to nine and a half cent, uh, inches and then about two and a half inches depth so that's what I had it at this point and then we spend a little bit more time felting it down again I'm sorry but it's just got to be done these are the layers you've got to do to get a nice firm base so I've never wet felted before. So this was quite good fun for me, actually. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. So this is the um, the roving or tops uh, that I had. And it's lovely colours. And I was just trying to work out where to put the colours on, you know, the top side that I wanted to use most of the time. Um, so I was just positioning them. And then I attach those into position so they stay where they are. But actually, at the end of the day, 
both sides of it came out really well. I wouldn't be too upset using either side. They um, And you sort of think because you've got to fold it in and under and you're going to get creases. Once you wet felt it, they sort of all disappeared quite well and it all sort of melded together. So I was just securing it underneath, folding in the edges as best I could. I can't do hospital corners. Nope, obviously not. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, just sort of felted the rest of it in. And I used all of that, um, that roving or tops there. I kept a little bit back just in case I had a gap, um, but I, I didn't actually have any gaps in the end. So I just added that last little bit that I've kept back. You'll see in a minute and, you know, just start felting it down again. So like I said, in all this probably took me about two hours and here I am going over. That's the little extra bit I had, but I didn't, you know, I didn't end up with any gaps. So you can see the colours starting to form here and it's not really firmly felted, but it is all secured on. I mean, people do wet felting and they don't actually needle felt the walls together. It's it just through agitation. So I didn't think I needed to felt it really firm. And then when I finished, it's just under the nine and it was about two inches thick. So I kept it quite thick because I really felt it would uh, thin out. So I've got a tray there. You could just do it on your sideboard, your utility sideboard. And I've got warm soapy water. It was quite hot soapy water in there. And then I'm just using some washing up liquid as well. So I poured the water over it in bits. I was really quite tentative doing this so I'll speed it up but I think you just soak it <laughs> um, and then I added a little bit more once I'd sort of covered all the areas it seemed to soak up the water and it seemed to get quite baggy you'll see in a minute there's little creases and folds but that disappears after a while which is my camera struggled with focus just on this bit so I do apologize so I've soaked it and then you get some soap between your hands and then start doing circular motions. And it was really good fun, really easy to do. Um, I was doing this for a good 15 to 20 minutes and you will notice a change in it. So see, it's all quite baggy. Don't forget the edges. So I turned it over, did the other side. It looks like it's got a, it's like a loose skin at the moment, but that disappears after a while and it becomes firmer. So. The soap's all on and then you start doing circular motions and you keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, the bubble wrap holds it really well. And then I use the bubble wrap in a minute. Now, the way I've heard that you tell if it's ready is you start to sort of pull it up. And if it resists um, and doesn't seem to pull away, then it seems to be felting together. And I try it several times and towards the end, it did get better. I noticed a definite change in it felt much firmer and all together um, it was a bit flatter so I folded the bubble wrap over I've seen people do wet felting with bubble wrap and then I just helped that to agitate it a bit more and that seemed to work quite well I was really happy with it just do any sort of rubbing you can and like I said I think this clip was actually 17 minutes long so that shows you exactly how long I did it for and then I put it in, um, I think you're supposed to put it in warm water first and then cold water. I rinsed it about three or four times, just squidging it out a bit like that. Um, I've heard people put it in their washing machine. I'm not sure. And then I put it out to dry. It's still quite wet here. So I squeezed it out a bit more and then I put it out to dry for about one to two days. It took a while to actually dry through properly. Luckily, it was sunny. So here it is all done and I am so happy with it. I cannot believe actually how easy that was. Thank you to Fuzzy Wuzzy Craft Supplies for their video because I've seen some other ones where it's a bit more complex, a bit more in depth, but this was dry felt it, the shape you want, wet felt it, wait for it to dry. The worst bit was waiting for it to dry, which took two days. So patience is a virtue, but um, I'm really happy with it. So I think you should all have a go at making your own one. The next video I'm going to do is about eight different needle felting mats because it's a question I get asked all the time. What is the best needle felting mat to use? So I have purchased most mats out there now over the years. 
so I'm going to do a full review so she can go and watch that next because there's some really good mats in that as well. Thanks for watching everybody and see you again soon.